say that therefore I can say that f is a bijection because f is a bijection the inverse of a function will become a function that means the inverse function will exist therefore f inverse exists and it is confirmed that f inverse exists now what you are supposed to do he asks you to find to find the inverse function finding the inverse function means finding the image rule for the inverse function like as you know the domain was r in f and codomain was r in inverse function also the domain and codomain will be interchanged so still remains as domain is going to be r and codomain is going to be r now i need to find some rule i need to find the image rule for f inverse because it is confirmed that it is going to be a inverse function so it must have a image rule so how to get the image rule for the function so by finding the image rule we can confirm that that's going to be the inverse function so here to find the inverse rule what we are going to do we are going to follow some process so let's go ahead with the process of finding the inverse rule so here i'll write to find f inverse to find f inverse that means i'm going to find the image rule for inverse function f inverse for that let us suppose take some element y and we equate it to the rule given to you the image rule f of x equal to 3x minus 5 our task is to find f inverse of x rule to find this i go with this process let us suppose that we take some y is equal to f of x equal to 3x minus 5 and we equate y to this and we equate y to this so what we get here is we get y is equal to y is equal to f of x and also you can say y is equal to 3x minus 5 so from each of these equations try to evaluate the x value if y is equal to f of x then what do you call x as here already we have seen the inverse of the function so in the case of the inverse of function the notation f inverse of a is very important let me tell you about what is f inverse of a if f of a is equal to b given then what you can what does it mean is it means that b is the image of a under the function f this can be written as a is equals to f inverse of b what does it mean it means that if b is the image of a under f then a is called the image of b under the function f inverse so these are going to be the equivalent uh, explanations for f under the function f here is going to be under function f inverse here f of a is equal to b can be written as a is equal to f inverse of b the explanation is b is the image of a under f or a is the image of b under f inverse so obviously here using this property we can find x value x is equal to f inverse of y so take it as equation one and same way try to extract the value of x from it the value of x is going to be 3x is equal to y plus 5 and x is equal to y plus 5 by 3 so i have got the x value from it so from finally from the equation 1 and 2 we have got the x values so the left hand sides are equal so we can equate the right hand sides so from the equation 1 and 2 from the equation 1 and 2 we get f inverse of y is equals to y plus 3 y plus 5 by 3 so obviously we have got the inverse function rule in terms of y so instead of y if you want to express that function rule in terms of x so we can change the variable so on changing the variable to x on changing the variable to x we get we get f inverse of x is equals to f inverse of x is equal to x plus 5 by 3 so finally we have found that rule for the f inverse the rule for f inverse is going to be x plus 5 by 3 
this is a rule which helps out to get the image under the function f inverse under the function f inverse if you want to find the image of 1 the image of 1 is given by f inverse of 1 is equals to 1 plus 5 by 3 that's going to be 6 by 3 that's going to be equals to 2 so this formula will help us in finding the image of any particular element in the function f inverse so here we have seen an example problem how to find the inverse function of a given function so you have to be very careful in the case if you have brought the functions in terms of logarithms so here let me go for some simple example where the function rule involves logarithms say so suppose the same kind of function if find the inverse function of the given function of maps r to r defined by f of x is equals to log x log x then here we need to check whether the function is going to be uh, uh, inverse find need find the inverse function if it exists here so obviously we need to go ahead with the same process of finding the one to one function and uh, onto function anyhow we already know the process of how to prove it as one to one and onto i'll directly go with the is anyhow it's going to become a one to one function and onto function uh, in the case of the domain and codomain is going to be changed to so change to n and n just check about whether it's going to be one to one function and onto function or not So here find out whether it is going to be 1 to 1 and on to if it is a 1 to 1 on to we have to find if it is a 1 to 1 and on to we need to find the inverse function observe carefully here the domain and codomain are given as n and n so confirm carefully whether it is existing or not the inverse function for it exists or not so as a domain is containing natural number and codomain is also containing a natural number now we need to check whether the inverse function exists or not so first we need to check whether it is going to be one to one function or not so whatever the number i take what are the number i take here i need to get the different images different elements so if i take some different values of x here say x1 x2 so f of x1 and f of x2 are going to give you different values so in this case here logarithm values what are the value i take it here from natural numbers is going to give you different values and so that means you can understand that different elements are going to have different images whereas coming for the onto function onto function says that here onto function let's suppose that i take say element x the image of it is going to be log x base z now i want to check whether the function is going to be onto or not so for which i take the pre image rule so the pre image rule is obtained by equating this to y so let us suppose that y be an element from the codomain such that we equate y to log x base z now if i want to find the value of x so x will become equal to e to the power of y so the pre image rule is going to be e to the power of y so e to the power of y so now check whether the I remove the image rule now check whether this function is going to be onto function or not what are the element i take here does the pre image for it exist or not if i take any natural number and i'll take any natural number say one if i take one so what you get here is e to the power of one e to the power of one is going to be e e is not a natural number e value is 2.712 so here what you can understand is what are the number i take from the codomain the pre image for it does not exist because one if i take if i take to the right side obviously the image find the pre image of it is going to give you e value is going to get 2.7 something so obviously we can say that's going not going to be a natural number therefore what you can confirm is you can confirm that for all uh, y belong to n they do not exist and x belong to n such that f of x equal to y therefore f is not a onto function because f is not a onto function the inverse function does not exist so in this case because the function is not a bijection the inverse function does not exist so simply you can conclude the question saying that the function is uh, the inverse function does not exist
and in some questions they'll ask you not to find the inverse function but they'll ask you to find the inverse of the function so let's go with my example find the inverse of a function defined by f of x is equal to say x square plus 4 so here there is a question he is not asking you about whether the inverse function exists or not simply he is asking you to find the inverse of the function not the inverse function so I'd be very careful what he is asking just find out carefully he is not asking you to find inverse function he is asking you to find inverse of a function so just we need to take the inverse of the function rule not the inverse function so that means it is not required to prove that f is a bijection you need not worry whether f inverse exists or not here we need to just find the inverse of the function rule so here it is not required to find out whether f is 1 to 1 and f is on to simply we can go to the third stage of the previous problem that means here directly to find the inverse of the function to find inverse of function what we do is we take the inverse of function that is assume that let us suppose y is equals to f of x is equal to x square plus 4 and try to find the inverse of the function rule to find it is exactly the same method what you have done so equate first two elements and equate the first and third so if i consider the first two terms i get y is equal to f of x if i consider y equal f of x x becomes equal to f inverse of y so it's going to be the equation one simultaneously consider the first and third term that is equate the first and third terms we get y is equals to x square plus 4 and now you solve it for x we get the x square is equal to y minus 4 so x is equal to square root of y minus 4 so this is going to be the equation number 2 finally from the equations 1 and 2 we get from equations 1 and 2 we get f inverse of y f inverse of y is equals to that means the left hand side are equal so equal the right hand sides we get f inverse of y is equals to y minus 4 and on changing the variable on changing the variable we get we get f inverse of x f inverse of x is equals to square root of x minus 4 so here what we have found we have found the inverse of some function but not the inverse function so we have to be very careful whatever the question he asks you check whether he asks you whether to find the inverse function or inverse of function and remember the notations for inverse of function and the inverse function remains the same so not to be confused with the notations just observe the question carefully and check whether it's going to be inverse of function or inverse function so once again to find the inverse function it is required to prove it is a bijection to find inverse of function it is not required to find whether it's going to be bijection or not so finally with this we have concluded the aim number four